Definitely my favorite scary movie is Us by Jordan Peele. One of my favorite films, I would say either Hoxon or Lords of Salem by uh, Rob Zombie. I have a few favorite scarier horror films. So the first two that come to mind are immediately The Silence of the Lambs. And um, I don't know if you would even consider it a horror. It's more of like a comedy horror, but it's, uh, it's Young Frankenstein. I would say the first Evil Dead movie. Lords for Lords of Salem. It's definitely the best way to describe that film. It's like the the uh, uh, the birth of the Antichrist, um, and how it would look like in a more uh, more modern setting. And so it's basically follows like the story of like Jesus Christ, but if it was the Antichrist, how would that look like? Hoxon was the same thing. But for people in nineteen in like nineteen twenties, it's like ridiculous. It's like scary on top of like all the ridiculousness going on, because like something would pop out and then it would just like vomit. It gets like so crazy, and I, I dig that level of like outrageousness within like horror films. You know, not just cheap jump scares. Having the comedic aspect and making something that seems scary to have a bit more of a lighthearted humor made it very made it. I guess you could say more tolerable and also have a bit of something where you can laugh at something that is scary. And for Silence of the Lambs, I actually watched that in a class of mine in high school. And I remember just everything between um, the actors pacing when it came to certain scenes, such as when Clarice is saying that one moment regarding the sheep and how they were screaming, just something within the pacing and how the director worked with the actors, I think really ties to having something be a bit more eerie. Jordan Peele, I think it's an interesting jump seeing him go from doing Keen Peele, like a comedy sketch show, to throwing all these overarching political and societal themes into movies like Get Out and Us, where it's about his views and starting conversations on things in society. I think that contrast between a comedy sketch show and saying a lot of big things on a big screen is very interesting and I think it's really admirable as well. His imagery is, I, I think just like with Marilyn Manson, uh, it's like the same idea with Rob Zombie, it's imagery is that people don't want to see, but they do. Um, uh, with Rob Zombie, uh, it's definitely has uh, is an idea of sh uh, depicting images that um, that f at least for him it was things that he heard when growing up uh, ideas of hell and what it's like they're pretty like they're pretty intense films but they're also pretty fun Jodie Foster is the star of the film and she stars an individual called Clarice and she is basically the top student of an FBI training academy and she is being told to interview Dr. Hannibal Lecter, who's played by Anthony Hopkins. And with that, that already has a bit of um, something that is a little bit scary for her. But I think where it ties to is tying to also female sexuality at the same time. For it seems that Hannibal Lecter opens up to Clarice more mainly because she is a woman. And I think that tying to a bit of a fear that women have in general, things that you see within walking around at night or even just certain encounters you have with men growing up, I think that it ties towards Clarice using it to her advantage when it comes to getting information out of Hannibal Lecter. Thinking about how our connections with people who we see as beneath us operate for example being too egotistical or being overzealous about something and how you view the person how you view people that you compare yourself to is definitely something to reflect on after watching that movie but with most like horror fil uh, comedy films there's like you know they just put jokes in a scary thing um with him it's like he knows how to take like uh horror and then escalate it like to like a thousand percent and make that just funny um and yeah, I think I, I, I do like that a lot, just how crazy things get in his films. And when it comes to Young Frankenstein, so it is about a doctor and he goes by Frankenstein and his grandfather was known for studying, bringing a body back from the death. And I think that 
what really stands out to me about it is that of how Frankenstein is originally a film that's been dated back ever since 1931. It's been remade a few times. And I think with Mel Brooks's approach, he wanted to have more of a comedic aspect to something that's always been seen as so scary. And I think that having the comedic undertones of each character having their own quirks and being able to play with certain stereotypes in Hollywood. For example, in some scary movies, there is always a stereotypical, um, and I say this in quotes, more of a dumb blonde. And they have that in young Frankenstein, who is his assistant, Frankenstein's assistant, but she uses that in her advantage of creating of a comedic aspect. And I love how Mel Brooks used that to depict something that usually is scary or is kind of horrific to something more of a comedic standpoint. I think the film has something for everyone, even if you're not too into traditional horror. If you're into having your themes and political statements not wrapped up in a little box and just kind of presented to you for you to figure out the movies for you, it's got themes that are plain and simple. So I think on those two standpoints, it's something that everybody could watch, definitely.